All right, so I want to take a little bit of time to show you how to graph a rational function that has a quadratic in the numerator. Now, to be honest, this is not really a quadratic rational function. That's not the technical name for it. But to be honest, I don't care. I'm going to call it whatever I want. So you know, you may remember that <clears throat> at a previous time, we had graphs where we had like asymptotes. And we would draw the draw it, and it would end up something like this. And then over at the end, it would do like a weird little loop thing like this. And when we did it before, we just had to say, you know what? In these situations, you're going to have to check your calculator to make sure whether this crosses the the x-axis and and comes back or or whatever happens. And so, but now we're going to learn how to take care of that in a different way. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all this. Do -do 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 -do. All right, and we're going to work this out. So first, we're going to find the asymptotes. Now, to get the vertical asymptote, of course, you want the bottom equal to zero. Now, we're going to factor both the top and bottom because, let's see, so we're going to have x minus 2, x minus 1, and then on the bottom, we're going to have x plus 2, x plus 1. And of course, I'm doing this because I want to check to see if <coughs> the, there are holes or if they're both asymptotes. Now, here, nothing cancels out, which means both of these will yield or, uh, vertical asymptotes. And so I'm going to go x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1 are both vertical asymptotes. All right, so that's my first little piece of information. Uh, let's go on, and uh, that should be written as negative 2, not negative 1. Um, so there we go, and now we need to find the other asymptote, which is the horizontal. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. My personal opinion is the easiest way is just to go limit as x approaches infinity. So we're looking at the end behavior, and then divide everything by the uh, highest power exponent. And so 3x over x squared plus 2 over x squared all over x squared over x squared plus 3x over x squared plus 2 over x squared. Now, as x goes to infinity, this is going to be 0, 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 which leaves me with this over itself, which is 1, over that over itself, which is 1, which means I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. All right, then I'll box that because we're going to come back to it later. So we've got our vertical asymptotes. We've got our horizontal asymptotes. Next, it asks me to find f prime of x and hence the position and nature of any stationary points. All right, so let's find the derivative. Now, it looks like it's a quotient, so I'm going to go ahead. The top is u. The bottom is v. So u equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. And you'll notice I'm not using the factored form right here because if I do do the factored form, then I'm going to have a product rule inside of my quotient rule. And though that would be fun, um, I would rather not do it. So there we go. We take the derivative, put the 2 in front, so 2x and then minus 3. It's really easy. Derivatives are easy when you have the simple polynomials. So uh, v, of course, is x squared plus 3x plus 2, which means that v prime is 2x plus 3. And so now we can plug it in because it will be v u prime minus u v prime all over v squared, which will be our derivative. So we'll go ahead and plug those in. Um, so we've got x squared plus 3x plus 2 times u prime, which is, uh, I'm not going to have no space, so we're just going to get rid of that and go down below. So x squared plus 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 3, and then we'll go minus u, which is x squared minus 3x plus 2 times v prime, which is 2x plus 3, and all over v squared, which is x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right, so at this point, we're now going to, we need to find the stationary points. Now remember, stationary points is where you have a derivative of 0. So if the derivative is 0, that means y prime equals 0. So all of this is uh, this part b here. So if I'm finding the derivative equals 0, the bottom doesn't matter because it's going to be multiplied by the 0. So really, I'm looking for where this top stuff equals 0. And so I need all of this. 
So I'm going to go ahead and distribute and move things around as I go. So we're going to go 0 equals, and then we've got 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x minus 3x squared minus 9x minus 6. And then we're going to have this all minus, and then we're going to distribute again. So 2 x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x. And then we've got 3x squared, so plus 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. Now don't start canceling things right away because we've got to do the minus. So it's going to be 0 equals, and I'll put some like terms together while I go, 2x cubed uh, so that's that, and then plus 3x squared minus 5x minus 6, and then I've got minus, and then 2x cubed, and then I've got a negative 6x squared and a positive 3x squared, so that would be a negative 3x squared, but the other one will make it a plus 3x squared, and then I've got positive 4 and negative 9, which would be negative 5, but the negative in front, so plus 5x, and then minus 6. And so from here, I should be able to put the like terms together. Oop, they cancel out. Uh, so I've got 0 equals 6x squared. There's my x squares. Oop, those cancel out, and so I'm left with minus 12. And so 0 equals 6 times x squared minus 2. So I go x squared minus 2 equals 0. And I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 2, because I added the 2, then I took the square root. So there we go. That is the stationary points at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2. All right, that means they're either maximums, minimums, or uh, horizontal inflection points. So uh, axes intercepts. So to get the axes intercepts, we are going to go back to our original function. And to get the axis intercepts, we need the top t equals 0. Luckily, we've already factored it. So axis intercepts, x intercepts at um, x equals 2 and 1, which you get from the top. Now, we can actually get the y intercept as well, which you don't necessarily need to do. But since it asks for axis intercepts, I suppose we should, which means we plug in 0 for x. So 0, 0, 0, 0, which means I get 2 over 2, which is 1. So y equals 1 is my y-intercept. So we've got all that stuff down. Check, check, check. So now we need to sketch and graph the information. Before I do that, I'm going to do one more thing, which is I'm going to go ahead and do a sine diagram for my derivative function. And so I'm going to go back to green because that's what I was using with my derivative over here. So here's a sine diagram for my derivative function, which is f prime of x. So at positive square root of 2 and at negative square root of 2, there are x-intercepts right, for the derivative function, so stationary points. Um, <clears throat> I have to pay attention to the asymptotes as well. Now remember the x squared plus 3x plus 2 factors to x plus 2, x plus 1 which means that we'll, those will both be squared. So at negative 2 and negative 1, so negative 2 is right here, uh, sorry, negative 1 is right here, which is an asymptote. And it looks like I'm going to need to make this a little bit bigger so I can fit the negative 2 on there. Because square root of negative, negative square root of 2 has to be between 2 and 1. So we've got those. So now we can go ahead and make a sign diagram. I think probably the easiest thing to plug into this would be, of course, 0. Because if I plug in 0, then I'll get 0, 0, positive 2 times negative 3, which would be negative 6, minus 0, 0, positive 2 times positive 3, so minus 6. And then if I put in 0, 0, that would be 2 squared. So negative 6 minus 6 over 2 squared. I have no idea what that is. I could figure it out, but I know that the answer is going to be negative. So that's important. When I put in 0, I got a negative. Now, the square root of 2 was a single root, which means it'll be positive over there. The negative 1 was a double, right? And so that means it'll be negative again. 
the negative 2 root 2 was a single root, so it will alternate. And then again, the negative 2 was a double, and so it should be positive again over there. Now remember, this is the sign diagram for the derivative function. And so now at this point, we're ready to kind of put everything together and to hopefully be able to finish up our problem here. So I'm just going to go down a little bit do, 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 so that we have enough space for our graph. Here we go. We've got our graph. Okay, I'm going to draw in my asymptotes first. So I've got an asymptote at x equals negative 1. Okay, so negative 1. And then I've got another one at negative 2. So vertical asymptote. I've got a horizontal asymptote at positive 1. So there we go. So I've got the asymptotes down. I've got x-intercepts at 2 and 1. So here's 1 and 2. So let me put my x-intercepts down. All right. And then I got a y-intercept at y equals 1. So right there. That's on the horizontal asymptote, but that's OK. That's not a big issue. It's fine that it's there. OK. Um, so now I'm going to look at my sign diagram and try to kind of put the pieces together. So it looks like. Um, to the left of negative 2, I need to be increasing. Now, if you wanted further support for this, you could create a sign diagram for the original function as well, right? And I'll do that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and look at what we have first. So if it's increasing, I know that with asymptotes, it should either be going like this or like this. And the only one of those that would be increasing is if my graph looks like this, okay? And then we go to the other side, it needs to be increasing again until it gets to negative root 2, which should be somewhere here in the middle. And so when it gets to that, then it should then be decreasing. Now I know that it uh, has asymptotes here, which means it should either look like this or like that. Um, because it's increasing and then decreasing, I'm going to assume that it looks like this. There's a maximum there at negative root 2, because that's my stationary point. So it should look like this. And then, of course, uh, my other stationary point is at the root of 2, which should be somewhere in between 1 and 2. So it'll be stationary here. And so then it needs to be, um, should be decreasing. So decreasing, 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 which I can already get from my x-intercepts. Decreasing, decreasing. When it gets here, it should be flat. And then at root 2, it starts increasing again. And so it should look something like that. And so now we've got a basic idea of what the graph looks like. Obviously, we don't have the exact y values of these relative maximums and minimums. But we have a basic idea. Now, um, obviously, this just kind of uh, is a sketch. If you wanted to, like I said earlier, you could have to switch back to blue for my original function here. If you wanted to, you could uh, draw a sign diagram for the original function, which hopefully matches what we have here. Okay, So we should, if we have a sign diagram here, you've got um, x-intercepts at positive 2 and positive 1. So positive 2 and positive 1. And then you've got y-intercepts at um, negative, or sorry, uh, vertical asymptote at negative 2 and negative 1. So negative 1 and negative 2. And, uh, oh, sorry, I made a mistake here, didn't I? I apologize. We need to go back to our graph. There, were, there was not an x-intercept here. And so it's a good thing I was doing this. So there's not an x-intercept. I apologize if you saw that. Yes, you're correct. It should have gone like this. There's no x-intercept, so it should stay down below that whole time. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our sign diagram here. If I were to plug in a number, for example, 0, I would get 0. Oh, we already know that because we said when we put in 0, we got 1, so that was positive. And so these are all singular, so it should alternate each time. Okay, I'm looking at the original function, of course. So left of negative 2, it's all positive. Between negative 2 and negative 1, it's all negative. From negative 1 to 1, it's positive. 
from 1 to 2, it's negative. From 2 on, it is positive. Now, again, remember, this one is referring to the original function. So positive means that you have a positive y value. Negative means you have a negative y value. When we did the sine diagram right here, this one was referring to the derivative, which meant that the plus was increasing and the minus was decreasing. So there we've put together everything that we could possibly know about derivatives and um, sine diagrams and rational functions, and we've been able to draw a fairly good sketch of what the graph should look like. Obviously, if you wanted more details, you could plug in some numbers. You could get these exact relative maxima and minima just by taking the x value which you have, because we know right here there is a minimum, and right here there is a maximum, and so you can take those x values plug it into the original function, and you could find out exactly what the value is at those points. All right, so there you go. Hopefully this is helpful as you go deal with your homework. Good luck.